satisfied but I've reached um, we're at the peak of the fishing season or supposedly the peak of it uh, this is early June and fishing has definitely improved there's no question it hasn't been good up to very recent times the weather and all I've gone into it before in other videos so I won't labour the point suffice to say that things have improved a long ways um, nice bit of dry fly fishing now in the evening times um, still that breeze downstream but I'm managing all the same but uh, what I want to talk about in this video is a question I'm asked a lot low water conditions no trout rising no trout moving what do I need to do to catch some trout so in this video I'm going to show you what I do in those circumstances it's probably what I would I would suggest this probably one of the more skillful forms of fly fishing micro nymphing fishing with very very tiny nymphs on very long leaders and it requires quite a level of skill to fish it successfully but it's not rocket science bit of practice and um, hoping that your eyesight is reasonably good my I depend obviously on glasses for my eyesight um, as some fella said to me one time it's an easy problem if it can be solved with glasses so uh, in this video I'll explain what um, what I need to do in those particular circumstances when it's very difficult to catch fish I mean when the river is low it's gin clear trout are super spooky they're even more spooky the lower the, the, the water drops the, the lower the water level drops the more spooky they become they can see everything, they're aware of every movement, so any little thing at all that makes them nervous and they'll be gone or at least they'll stop feeding. So this is what I have found to be the most successful way to catch fish under those circumstances. So stay with me. I just landed a fish there. This is a, something I do in low water, um, especially fishing very tiny nymph, size 22 on a really long leader and the reason for that is if you have a say a conventional short leader say eight or ten feet um, basically your fly line is going to be seen by the trout that you're fishing so hence the 18 foot leader and the size 22 nymph because of the low water it has a it creates very little disturbance on entry to the water which means you don't disturb fish easily. It's a kind of a very stealthy form of nymph fishing, if you like. It sometimes pays dividends in places where other methods might fail. It's all about delicacy and not letting them know you're around the place basically. Now how do you how do you um know when they're taken on an 18 foot leader? Well basically grease the leader down to within about three feet of the nymph and you're sort of depending on the leader to indicate a take. So I'm just renewing me the grease here now just onto the front of the fly line and approximately 12 feet of the 18 foot leader, maybe a little more. That way the leader floats on the surface and if you if you have the right kind of light you'll be able to see any little hesitation or any stop or anything.
I'm fishing a size 22 but 20 would do most of the time but anything bigger than a 20 sort of creates too much disturbance and um, kind of tendency to scatter spooky fish oh not sure if that was the bottom now or a fish one way to find out no I'd say that was a fish or I don't know maybe not a little bit of weed on the fly that's a fish yeah heading for the weeds he's trying to get under them Oop, he's got under him. <laughs> he's made several attempts to get under the weeds. Ooh, hold on fella. So we are size 22 nymph. Tiny little thing, but it does pay off. Not big fish, but lovely fish. And it's a lovely way to catch them. sometimes how some of these tangles and stuff happen it's like there's um, it's just a bit of a mystery really the bull rushes are causing me grief again Back in action. Oh, he looks like a better fish. Oh, yes. Try and keep him out of these weeds now. Come on, fella, don't don't go to the weeds on me. Yo. He's trying again, he keeps... Okay. Oh, yeah. Come this way. Come out. Come out. Yeah, he got off. They get to the weeds and... That's it basically. And with such light gear it's impossible to sort of bully them out. So just have to sort of take your chances. Anyway. Lost him as well. I get into the weeds almost every time.
tiny fish. It's easy enough to keep the small ones out of the weeds, just holding close to the surface, but the bigger fish won't allow you to do that. Again, we won't refuse any of them though. Whew. fish on a size 22 A fat little fella. Ooh. Steady on, boy. Yeah. where he was, right up at the very top in a couple of inches of water. Very strong. Heading for the weeds again. Come out. He's actually foul hooked, I'd say. That's why he's so got so much power. He's gone in the weeds. Ugh. Come back here. Yeah, and he got off. <laughs> oh well. So, Shinna Will. Um, it's not that difficult. Um, when I coach people on this particular method of fly fishing, I'm often faced with the the response when I show them a size um, 22 nymph. They say, "Jesus, they're so small. They're, no trout is going to take something that small." And uh, if you actually study what trout eat, the vast majority of it is sub size 14. Most of it is very, very small indeed. So size 22 is nothing unusual for a trout to eat. 
and as you can see it definitely works. I've caught very large trout on size 22 nymphs. Um, just so you fully understand, I was using there in that video, I was using an 8 foot 4 weight rod. I planned to go dry fly fishing but there was no trout rising so I automatically switched to um, the upstream nymph, the size 22. The leader I was using is a 14 foot 6x tapered leader and then I added 4 feet of 7x tippet. So overall it was 18 feet long. And that avoids the trout that you're fishing seeing the fly line flashing over them basically. Your fly line's a long way back from your quarry so they're far less likely to see it. And because the nymph is so small it creates very little disturbance on entering the water and for the trout everything appears to be normal. So that's how I catch trout in very low water. It's a brilliant technique, per particularly where trout are very spooky. Not all trout are spooky but in the rivers I fish the trout are super spooky and they get even more spooky as the water level drops. So that's it folks. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, please consider, if you're not already a member uh, or already um, a subscriber, subscribing to the channel, like the video and share it around to your friends who might be interested in it. Also, I'd appreciate any support. There's a link in the description to this video to my Patreon page. So, Shinawil, Godi and Keador Ele, Bigi Slan, Bigi Agias Agus, Slan Tamo.